Hello Farm Fest 2020. This is Stephen here. Um, just climbed up into the woods above Buxton, the Grinlow Woods, which are uh, once upon a time they were a hill of uh, lime kilns and intense sort of for a couple of hundred years, really intense back-breaking work for a lot of people living in little hovels and uh, slaving away as is the uh, English way and then about a couple hundred years ago they, the hillside got planted with uh, trees so this is my little go-to place it's just 10 minutes away from where I'm staying I've been wandering around the woods trying to find a tree an old tree horizontal branch that I can put the uh, phone and here we are it's quite a sweet setting so uh, yeah, Farm Fest 2020. Shame we all can't be together in the flesh. It's such a good festival, such a good fundraiser. Um, and if you're watching this and you've got a few spare pennies or pounds, then uh, do chip in. Because as we know, the work that the uh, Catholic Worker Farm does is just wonderful and sending love not just to the Catholic workers but to the guests. The women and their children if anyone's watching hello i think it's a pretty reasonably child friendly set i do do some rude poetry occasionally but i'm not going to do this for farm fest 2020. yeah and this first time i've ever done a video show and not only am i doing a video show across time and space through internet trickery and Fran's digital wizardry. It's also, it's Thursday morning, I think the set's coming on Sunday, so before I begin, it's already a uh, dimension bending experience from me to you via this funny little dot on my phone. So sending your love, hope you're all settled in. Mm, this 15 minute set, we're two minutes in, so get comfortable crack open your beer or your squash and enjoy the first part of my show. So I'm going to start off with a, um, a remix I did of a 13th century classic by Rumi. Many of you, if you know Rumi's poetry, you'll know his very famous uh, poem called The Guest House. So I remixed it for modern times. I don't think the original involved two bottles of Thietzen's Old Peculiar. I am sure Rumi will forgive me. And the theme of the poem is just welcoming everything in our experience. It's called The Guest House. And the remix is called The Guest House Old Peculiar Bed and Breakfast Remix. This being human business, it's a bit like being a blooming bed and breakfast. Every morning, someone new on your doorstep. A joy, a depression, a betrayal, or perhaps one of those little flashes of sweet clarity amid all the milk bottles and bin bags and bills. Open the door and greet them all, even if they're a skulky hooded bunch of crack moments who end up running off with all your bars of guest soap and towels and prize consumer durables, including the stereo which was bolted down. Whatever, treat each and every new guest with respect. You never know. They might be ransacking you to make way for some new delight. The exhaustion, the grief, the guilt, the self-judgment, the despair, all those gnarled and gnarly beings you'd rather turn away. Meet them all on your doorstep with a big smile on your chops and a couple of open bottles of Thiexton's Old Peculiar and welcome each and every one in. Yes, give thanks for whomsoever crosses your threshold because every single guest has been sent by the great tourist board beyond to test the strength of the springs of your bed and the metal of your heart and soul. There you go. So that's... I started uh, recording this show last night in some other woods and I uh, got to the end of that poem and uh, there were just midges everywhere. and I. I even though English midges aren't nothing compared to Scottish midges, they're still really annoying. So, um, fortunately, no midges so far. If you see any, go, they're behind you. 
Okay, here's a little, very little poem about a kingfisher. I don't know if you see kingfishers on the lakes of the Catholic worker farm, I really hope so. I sometimes go a year and I don't even see a kingfisher, but when I do, oh, it's like a blessing. And this is called Kingfisher, Kingfisher, Sing Me a Song, Isis Remix. And it's called the Isis Remix because I saw it, this kingfisher on the Thames in Oxford. And Oxford isn't a place to call a spade a spade, so where the Thames passes through Oxford, it's also known as the Isis. I caught this morning your electric blue flight spearing through the airwaves, oblivious to the gravity of the slow green water below. You flew past me with such eager recognition that I found myself whistling across the river as you dived down to its surface and skated so swiftly and breathlessly away. I have a fuel tank inside me marked Kingfisher Joy. You filled me up. I can run for years. And um, the next one, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a sad poem. It's sad uh, because it's about Tiananmen Square. I wrote it. Wow, that must be 1989. Um, if some of you will remember, and a lot of you will know from history. There was a amazing upswell of democratic sentiment in China and for a while the whole world thought oh they're going to push on through um, but they didn't but I wrote this uh, poem for the brave people who came out on the streets um, particularly on their bicycles it's called Tiananmen Bicycles Tiananmen bicycles and Tiananmen tanks hurry along Beijing streets to different rhythms. You can't freewheel in a tank. You can't feel the breeze in your hair in a tank. You can't ring your bell and catch a smile in a tank. Tiananmen bicycles and Tiananmen tanks. You can't crush tents on a bicycle. You can't crush bicycles on a bicycle. You can't crush people on a bicycle. Tiananmen bicycles and Tiananmen tanks hurry along Beijing streets to different tunes. Your freewheeling, your risk-taking, your brave dancing stopped us all in our tracks, threatened to melt even hearts of armoured steel, Tiananmen bicycles and Tiananmen tanks. Out of the buckled frames of your dreams, we will salvage and remember and forge new bicycles to carry us along. Tiananmen bicycles and Tiananmen tanks. Out of the buckled frames of your dreams I will salvage and remember and forge a new bicycle to carry me along so, so that one day we may pass each other by, freewheeling and conspiring with the breeze, ringing our bells to the winds, stealing laughter and smiles from one another. Tiananmen bicycles and Tiananmen tanks. We will couple the courage and the compassion you left behind, Tiananmen bicycles and Tiananmen tanks. Tank tracks leave marks. Bicycle wheels make revolutions. Tiananmen bicycles and Tiananmen tanks hurry along Beijing streets to different rhythms. I guess that one goes out to all the people in Hong Kong and in China. I mean, I know people in Britain don't have really have the moral right to uh, critique other regimes uh, when we've got a lot of work to do ourselves but as you know particularly with Catholic work uh, uh, our solidarity is with everyone everywhere around the world particularly those who are suffering systematic oppression oh <sighs> okay a bit more upbeat um, And it, this one's called All Power to the Allotments. So for all you allotment holders and veggie growers, I hope you enjoy this one. I wrote this for a lovely festival in Oxford uh, called the Elder Stubbs Festival. And it needs a little bit of uh, audience participation. I don't know how this works. Um, so if I go more power to our elbows, you raise your fist in the air 
and go all power to the allotments. Okay, we'll try that. I don't know how many people are going to do this, but if you're in your armchair, more power to our elbows, all power to the allotments. More power to our elbows, all power to the allotments. Humanity is born free, but everywhere is in supermarket chains, buying 14.7 centimeter long carrots, stripped of dirt, geography, effort, labor, stripped of content, context, joy, and flavor, buying 14.7 centimeter long carrots, stripped of carrot hood. No, this cannot be so. This cannot be right. Carrots have rights, essential, self-evident carrot rights to be accepted in their diversity, to encouraged in their deviancy, to be eased and shaken from the familiar earth with inefficient and unprofitable gratitude, to be greeted by the eyes that have followed them from seed to seedling to maturity, to be welcomed by the eyes that will eat them. Only thus, only thus will we see the demise of the 14.7 centimeter long carrotless carrot and carrot by carrot by carrot shall we pull the synthetic rug from under the well-heeled feet of our supermarket musters. So, more power to our elbows, all power to the allotments. Power comes from the water barrel of an allotment shed. Power comes from the meeting of rain and earth and sun. Power comes from the blade of a spade, the turning of a fork, the rhythm of a hoe. Power comes from the raw materials and means of production, seed, earth, trowel, spade, watering can, being in the hands of the proud and sweaty producer, in generous, toiling, filthy, happy hands, connected to generous, toiling, supple wrists, connected to generous, weathered forearms, connected to generous, toiling, unsung elbows. So, more power to our elbows, all power to the allotments. This land yields food fit for neither a king nor a slave, but fit for a human being. This land levels pretensions. This land plays host to the revolutions of the seasons. This land cradles roots that undermine. This land is shadowed by the joy of leaf and flower and fruit. This land is an earthy barricade against the fascism of conformist, uniformist, bourgeois, counter-revolutionary, counter-evolutionary, petty, petty, bourgeois, imperialist, materialist, xenophobic, terrorphobic, petty, 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 bourgeois, consumerist, illusionist, confusionist, reactionary, refractory, petty, 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 bourgeois, fascistically lit supermarket vegetable displays. This land is an earthy barricade. This land is an earthy serenade. This land is an earthy cascade of root, fruit, shoot, leaf, flower, a pod of sod, of fodder for stomach, heart and soul. Comrades in spades, let a hundred courgette flowers bloom, let allotments roll higgledy-piggledy across the land like a harlequin's haphazard cloak of earthy hues. Comrades in spades, we have nothing to lose but our neonic, demonic, necrophiliac, necrophobic supermarket chains. So, more power to our elbows, all power to the allotments. More power to our elbows, all power to the allotments. More power to our elbows, all power to the allotments. Ah, oh, that was good. I haven't read that one for a while. So, wow, we're coming up to the 14 minute mark. I was going to finish with. A little one. It's called Human Kindness. Um, I started writing this one about five or six weeks into the pandemic, and I thought I was going to write a clever poem about viruses, but this poem came out and it's a lot sweeter. Sometimes you know, the poem takes over from my, uh, my focus and takes me somewhere else, so I hope you enjoy this one. It's called Human Kindness. It only took a few days for her precious little act of kindness to leave the village bounds. It only took a few days more to infect the local town. Then it spread across the country like a riot of wild flowers and soon city walls were tumbling as they lost their ancient powers. Over lakes and seas and oceans, it spread from shore to shore, picking every lock on every heart and opening every door. Her kindness disarmed enemies, her kindness disarmed friends, 
Her kindness knew no borders, her kindness knew no end. Open up your hearts, she sang, open up your minds, for only human kindness will prove we're humankind. Yes, only human kindness will prove we're humankind. Stay tuned, part two coming up soon from a woods near you. Okay, part two. Ah. Oh. So this one is quite a new poem. I wrote, it's called, If I Could, I'd Marry Nature. And uh, it's just the whole, I spend a lot of my time in a little cabin on the south coast of Devon, uh, even though I'm up in Buxton right now. So these are just little, little scenes from cabin life. Uh, yeah, uh, feed my heart and soul every day. If I could, I'd marry nature. The patient kitchen spider, who I've only ever met once, guarding my tea bags from all known and unknown danger. The grey-capped robin, reminding me, ahem, that it's way past breakfast time and not ahem, for the first time. The magpie, balancing on the edge of the bird table, so weighty, so handsome, so regal, so keen. The wide-eyed mare, nostrils quivering and flaring around the rising vapours of my morning cup of coffee. The young, round rabbit, snoozing on my doorstep, Midday sun illuminating the ruby vessels of its slowly flopping ear. The sunbathing adder, coiled upon the path, thick as rope, thrilling as gold. The inquisitive cow, bovine slobber drooling from her inquisitive nose as she rasps her sturdy tongue across my open, salty palm. The diplomatic stoat, scurrying between hedgerow, hedgerow worlds, pulling liminal strings. And the dawdling badger, the dawdling badger slowly waddling up the lane ahead of me, lost in brockish thought, serenaded by such finely descending evening light, and humming the sort of song that only dawdling, waddling badgers hum when they think nobody is listening. Tumpty tum, tumpty tum, tumpty tum, tumpty tum, tumpty tum, tumpty tum. There you go. Ah, oh, we love nature. Proper medicine. And here's some other, more of my cabin medicine. Um, I think I've done four winters in the cabin, so uh, keeping the wood burner going isn't just a, a nice effect. It's like vital for my uh, vital for my existence. Otherwise, I freeze to death. Uh, and there's a, there's a real after a couple of winters, you get to know how to fine tune the wood burner so that at night, if you rack it up in the morning, there's still embers, still warmth. So this is called Keeping the Faith, and really it's about Grandfather Fire. To open the stove... Let's start again. To open the stove door at dawn and find some embers still aglow within their comfy bed of ash. To build this morning's fire upon their promise and with focused breath to burst it into flame it's as if some kind old soul has been praying for me all night long, watching over me, keeping the faith. To peg my shirt and underwear around the warming chimney pipe, to put the kettle on and make my morning cup of tea, to clothe my nakedness in the welcome warmth of this relay race of grace, to sit by this window and write this poem, whilst the sun, from whom all fire and flame proceed, 
rises gloriously through the morning clouds to burst upon the sea, a path of such dazzling and inviting light. This is the medicine that daily brings me back to life. Yay. And here's another cabin poem. Um, it's a series of seven haikus. So I don't know if you know anything about haikus. It's a really old traditional Japanese poetry form, which in, ja in Japanese would have five syllables in the first line, seven in the second line, and five in the third line. Um, and I wrote one of these one morning on a Monday morning, just to sort of distill what I could see. And then I woke up on Tuesday morning and thought, oh, I'll write another haiku. So I wrote one every morning. So these are seven little scenes from cabin life. And the, the whole poem is called Every Day a Gift. Monday morning blues of the rippling sea beneath mother of pearl skies. Tuesday brings strong winds and rivulets running down rain freckled windows. Wednesday's clouds meld sky and sea, whilst through the salty mist white horses roam. Thursday's storms wake me at dawn and carry me down to a raging shore. Friday brings Venus, diamond sister of the moon, calling forth the sun. Saturday's drizzle serves me porridge and coffee by a faithful fire. Sunday's golden sky soon clothes herself in grey, but I've glimpsed her glory. Oh, what next? Yeah, here's uh, two of my favourite pastimes throughout my adult life have been hitchhiking and wild camping, as it's now called. It just used to be called camping, but... It sounds more dynamic, calling it wild camping. Um, yeah, I've hitched thousands of lifts, thousands of miles. I've camped out. I've camped out in the most beautiful, stunning places, and I've camped out in the hedgerows of service stations. So it's not all glory, um, as this poem will describe. But, uh, and the poem is called "The Realm of the Beggar King." When there are no keys in your pocket and no cares on your mind, when you don't know the day and you don't know the time, when the sun's your only compass and the moon's your only lover, when the stars are your ceiling or a yew tree is your cover, when you envy no creature except the bird on the wing, then you know you're at the helm of that liminal realm, the realm of the beggar king. When your sweat smells of vinegar and your underwear smells of cheese, when there are outbreaks of mutiny amongst the fibres of your knees, when that blister on your soul is beginning to slip and slide, when you've been waiting three hours or more and still ain't got a ride, when your belly begins to howl and your socks begin to ming, then you know you're at the helm of that liminal realm, the realm of the beggar king. When you're in a foreign land, yet feel totally at home, when the sunlight on the mountainside thrills you to the bone, when that complete stranger at the wheel feels as easy as a friend, when you've pitched your tent on some western shore and don't want the day to end, when the dawn chorus wakes you and makes you want to sing, then you know you're at the helm of that liminal realm, the realm of the beggar king. When some boy racer's just given you the finger and some snotty rats have just given you the thumb, when you're tempted to hurl curses back, when your faith in life's gone numb, when you daydream of past glories and fear you've lost your knack, when you wonder why you keep on doing this stuff but there ain't no turning back, when all the spiritual tomes you've ever read no longer mean a thing, then you know you're at the helm of that liminal realm, the realm of the beggar king. When you're in the middle of nowhere, yet in the scheme of things, when the hobo angels by your side are pulling all the strings, when you remembered the rules of thumb and life is but a game, when that vehicle on the horizon is calling out your name, 
when that old red Porsche has just pulled over or that family of five have squeezed you in, then you know you're at the helm of that liminal realm, the realm of the beggar king. <sighs> what else? Okay, this is uh, one I wrote this week. Um, I haven't, this is the first time I've performed poetry in over a year, and I only got the invitation for Farm Fest about three weeks ago, and then last weekend I got another invitation for another festival happening this weekend in the flesh. Um, it's called the Medicine Festival. It's, uh, it's a sort of shamanic arts festival. Um, so I've got two gigs, this gig and that gig. So I thought it'd be good to write them a poem. It's called The Ideology of the Trees. Listen out for the ideology of the trees and you'll hear nothing but the trembling of the knees of the bees as they breeze through the leaves in search of rudely opened flowers. Listen out for the ideology of the flowers and you'll hear nothing but beauty and colour and joy emanating from their lips. And although your mind may name them, it can never really know them, for they care only for the glory of the sun. Listen out for the ideology of the rivers and you'll hear nothing but shivers shimmering up and down your weary spine, dissolving history dissolving time, singing songs of praise to the bountiful ocean. Listen out for the ideology of the wind and you'll hear nothing but gratitude and nothing but grace. Ah, <sighs> 11 minutes in. What next? What next? I'm gonna flip through. Oh, here's a nice, oops, low power mode. Hopefully uh, we've got three minutes left. So here's a, here's a little poem um, that I wrote two years ago. I did 10 weeks hitching and wild camping around Britain, visiting sacred sites and pubs. And every now and again, I just get really tired of hitching and I just uh, walk. So coming into Canterbury, I decided to stop a day short and walk one of the old pilgrim routes through massive agribusiness orchards and little community orchards uh, like the old pilgrims did. Uh, and this is called Pilgrim's Progress. Just put one foot in front of the other and leave all fancy, angelic apparition, beatific vision, instant enlightenment plans behind. Instead, pray constantly that sore twinge on the bottom of your big toe doesn't rub into a blister. Trust the path before you, and if you believe in God, trust God. Otherwise, trust your legs. Trust the path, trust your knees, trust your feet, trust your toes. No fancy pants, no fancy plans, just one pilgrim foot in front of the other pilgrim foot and then that one in front of the other. And when you ease into your wayfarer's bed at the end of another well-trod day, let your aching, salty, faithful body softly open its pilgrim belly and to the rafters raise exhausted hymns of gratitude and silent songs of praise. Sweet. 14 minutes, pretty good time in. Um, wishing you all well, give you a little view of the woods. Sweet, huh? Really nice venue, well organized, London Catholic Worker Farm. Um, don't know if my rider came through though. Where's my bottles of old Theakston's Peculiar? You will be hearing from my lawyers. Okay, lovely dot on my phone lovely people saying hello to you whoever you are um 
wishing you all well, wishing all the other performers well, wishing all the Catholic Worker Farm well, and oh yeah, if you want to read any more of my poetry, you can visit my website, it's pigandink.com, pig and ink, and on the homepage, you can actually download a free PDF of some of my poems. Um, parental warning, some of them are quite rude. Um, yeah, I've really enjoyed this. Uh, new to me, uh, but yeah, sending you all love and the medicine and the wisdom of the trees. One love.